If you want to add thermal optics to your tool set or hunting arsenal, but don't want to spend thousands of dollars on a handheld machine or scope, the X Infrared X2 at less than $400 is a fantastic mid-range option that outperforms even more expensive solutions from competitors. And it offers a significant quality bump from the usual built-in smartphone thermal cameras such as the one on this. So the X2 is a tiny monocular camera with a two times zoom and manual focus, which works over USB-C, though an iPhone compatible model is also available. I'm James Roos, you're watching makeuseof.com and today we're gonna to check out the X Infrared X2. So you can use it in one of three ways. For the absolute simplest of setups, you're just gonna pop it into the port on the bottom of your phone, that's it. Super convenient, comes with a carry case so you can keep it safe when not in use. Just plug it in, launch the app, and boom. But also included in the package is a grip holder, consisting of a comfortable grip, a large smartphone mount, and it'll even fit something uh, as large as the Ulephone 18T, so it'll fit anything, as well as a smaller forward-facing mount uh, into which you fit the X2. And then there's a USB-C extension cable as well, coming from there to your phone. For inspection work as part of your toolkit, as well as when hunting to initially locate your target, this is also a very simple setup. And it's likely the most common use case. Compared to awkwardly holding a smartphone, it makes it a lot easier to take steady shots. Lastly, you can get an optional shell mount, which is both for protecting the module and mounting it directly to a rifle. So this shell has a Picatinny uh, rail mount system and extension on the other side, so you don't lose any precious rail space if you have a laser or other accessories. Or you can even use this same shell and then mount it to a tripod instead with a small adapter. So the X2 sits securely inside this shell, which is how I have it mounted at the moment, which you can see behind this rubber cap here. And then you can attach your smartphone directly behind it as well, like this giving you a super simple uh, close range scope that you can fit directly to your gun. Now heads up, in this review I won't actually be hunting anything. Don't worry if you're squeamish about uh, killing stuff, we're not going to be doing that. But I will be showing you plenty of sample footage uh, for what you can do. So it's an incredibly versatile system, either directly handheld use, uh, straight onto your smartphone, or mounting onto your gun for hunting and target acquisition. Unfortunately, my rifle is a bit sparse when it comes to rails, so I ended up with it mounted in a less than satisfactory manner underneath the barrel, which was pretty awkward to use in practice. But if you wanted to replace your scope entirely with this, then it's certainly a viable option and a lot cheaper than a full thermal scope. That said, I will just say that I found manual focusing once it was uh, inside this pick rail shell to be really awkward because you basically have to put your fingers into the line of sight uh, which then, of course, means you can't see how the focus is doing. So let's talk about the tech specs. Weighing a mere 18.5 grams and measuring 23 millimeters square by 23.8 depth, along with the lens, the X2 by itself doesn't feature a display, nor does it compute anything. It's just a sensor, and it needs to be connected over USB-C, and you'll also need to download the custom Thermal Eye X app, which has this evil eye-looking icon. That's where the magic happens. It won't work with a standard camera app either. There's a chicken. <laughs> Let's go see if we can find what's making that noise there. There's another few there. They're all sitting on the house. Three heads. So the X2 features a thermal resolution of 256 by 192 pixels at 50 hertz frame rate which doesn't sound like much, but it is significantly higher than that typically available uh, in smartphones such as the Cat S62 Pro uh, and the Ulephone 18T, which is 160 by 120 pixels using the uh, FLIR Lepton 3.5 embeddable sensor, while the sensor inside of the X infrared is proprietary. Now, one main difference I'll note between the type of sensor embedded in a thermal camera equipped smartphone and the X Infrared X2 is that the smartphones will typically offer a hybrid view, combining the standard camera lens and the thermal image having been processed together, while the Thermal Eye app and the X2 sensor 
only offer thermal view. There's no optical camera here, of course. It's just the one sensor and it only captures infrared. But in practice, I found the resolution bump more than made up for that with a far better, easier to understand thermal view than I'd previously tried with built-in smartphone sensors. However, I will just emphasize that it's a manual focus here. You do need to twist the focus ring uh, to dial in your target. The Thermal iX app itself also does a lot of heavy lifting here with various image processing and enhancements. So let's talk about the features offered in the app. Firstly, like all thermal smartphone sensors, you get a wide choice of color palettes, enabling it to work uh, stealthy with white hotspots or green at night or inverted black hot for daytime use, for instance, as well as a slightly tweaked version uh, for bird spotting or the more traditional iron red mode. So there's something to suit everyone there in terms of offered color palettes. On top of that, you have the heat spot tracking. This will automatically identify and mark any hot spots it finds in the overall view. However, this is only relative compared to the rest of the sensor. It's not looking for a specific, say, body temperature. I found the Thermal iX app, unlike the FLIR app, doesn't, as far as I can tell, allow you to lock in a particular temperature range. It remains dynamic at all times, uh, changing depending on the maximum and minimum that it can see. So one really neat feature is the ability to add a variety of crosshairs and adjust the position so you can zero it easily when you're using it directly mounted uh, to a gun. And the good thing is that you won't have to zero it every time you put your phone back on because the sensor will still be in the same place. But once you've adjusted that crosshair position, you can lock it off and close the adjustments. You can also enable temperature labels for exact measurements though I found it added a significant amount of lag on the phone that I was testing with. So hopefully now you've seen lots of test footage that I've taken from this. I also took something similar from the Eulophone 18T. It's not exactly the same. It wasn't shot at exactly the same time, but it should give you an idea of how the two compare. And I think it makes it sort of perfectly clear how much better this is than a smartphone FLIR system. Overall, I'm really happy with the quality of output from the X2, and it's going to prove immensely useful for pest control at night, which is my main use case. So are there any downsides to the X Infrared X2? Firstly, the minimum 2x magnification is fine for a quick scope, but for inspection of larger areas inside your house where you may not have that much room to maneuver, I did find myself wanting something less zoomed, a standard 1x, uh, the same as a smartphone would have had. On the other hand, if you're inspecting smaller work areas, you may actually really appreciate that zoom level. It's definitely both a pro and a con, depending on your use case. Secondly, I mentioned the manual focus ring already. It is awkward, but hopefully you won't need to focus too much. If you're sat scoping out a particular target area, um, you can just leave it on one uh, focus, of course. But for run and gun mixed distance use, it is a bit annoying. Lastly, the fact that it is thermal only, depending on the context of what you're doing, uh, could be less than ideal. Smartphones with FLIR built in typically offer that hybrid view, which can be useful if perhaps the temperature is otherwise very homogenous. I haven't found that to be an issue for my use case, however, the resolution and the thermal accuracy is excellent. So even small differentials are perfectly visible. To be honest, I think having the hybrid view might be a bit of a crutch. Uh, for the built-in smartphone sensors because the resolution is otherwise so low that purely using it in thermal mode is often very unhelpful. With the X2, that's just not the case. Pure thermal is perfectly fine. Anyway, thanks to X Infrared for sending this over for review. I hope this has proved helpful to you. Hit me up in the comments if you have any questions or feedback. Otherwise, hit like and consider subscribing for reviews of the latest gadgets, coolest tech, and more from all of us over at makeusof.com. Until next time.